So today's flavor of video card is the AMD Fire Pro W4100. I was on the eBay because, well, I had nothing better to do. And they kind of did that whole fishing thing and they said, hey, $15, buy it now. Seller wants you to buy it. I'm like, for real? I've never met the seller. How does he know I want to buy this? How does he know that I want a cheap graphics cards? Yeah, I think it's one of those phishing scams and whatever. So I I bit and I bought it and I paid $15 and with the whole, you know, shipping and handling and the whole uh, Uncle Sam taxes and everything, I think it was like $21. So I figured why not give it a go. I like these small graphics cards because they work great in those um, uh, the HP Z240, Dell, Lenovo's, all those small form factor builds where they have that low profileness going on over here. And these work great for like, I find to be in my opinion, the whole home theater setup on a budget and maybe a game or two. I don't know. We'll find out in this video. So definitely keep watching, please. So let's take a look at this graphics card. What is it? The Fire Pro 4100, a professional workstation graphics card. Workstation in a small size. Awesome. Launched in August of 2004, built on the 28 nanometer processor and based on the Cape Verde graphics processor. And it does support DirectX 12. Hmm. This is two gigs DDR5, which I do like. I do like the whole DDR5 thing, and I also like the two gigs, although I want to have four. Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, four. I want to have four. And the operating frequency is 630 on the CPU core clocks and, well, GPU core clocks and 1,000 megahertz on the memory. Doesn't use any power connectors, and it only draws, I think, what is it, 50 watts maximum. You got your four mini display outputs, so you have to use this adapter thingy going on. You get this on the old Amazon for about maybe five, ten dollars. I can't remember. I don't know. I just kind of swipe and buy things and just hope that my wife don't find out and yell at me later. So I think I paid five or ten dollars for that one. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, PCI Express 3.0. And it's 171 millimeters long, 69 width, and a nice small single slot cooling solution. Now I found with these AMD cards, these coolers tend to run pretty noisy. The old workstations from uh, Quadros from NVIDIA tend, tend to be quiet. So let's go ahead, let's switch the, the camera angles and let's take it apart. Check out the old thermal paste, make sure it's not poof, dusty crusty. And we'll go ahead and we'll pop her in and we'll do some playage. Well, all right, so four screws on the back using our handy dandy iFixit toolkit. Definitely not a sponsor, but a pretty good gra uh, graphics card. A pretty good toolkit to use nonetheless. So one thing I like about these graphics cards is that they're so simple and easy to take apart. These new ones today are so like mongosily huge and you have a thousand screws. And I think it was what the NVIDIA 20 series founders edition was like almost impossible I think it was easier to break into Fort Knox than it is to take that card apart so yeah this is pretty simple and it's pretty nice on it let's take it apart and let's see what we got you know the thermal paste ain't too bad on this maybe somebody took it apart yeah the thermal paste ain't too bad on it I kind of hate that I opened it up I could just put it back together and just pretend I never saw it that would be the right thing to do but uh, considering I'm recording this I probably should do the proper thing and fix this. Yeah, this thermal paste is pretty good. I think somebody uh, actually treated this thing. Or they were running into overheating problems and figured this was the solution and the card still doesn't work and I just got hosed by the old eBay saying, hey, you want to buy this card dirt cheap. So that is the possibility. Guess I'll find out. All right, just kind of give you, want to give you guys a in-depth look. You got our memory chips, the whole other magical things that make this thing go on and off and all that good stuff <laughs> in our little CPU cooler yeah crazy but for the most part that's about it so we're gonna finish putting this thing back together put some fresh thermal paste on it make her a little happier and make me happy and give me peace of mind and one of the reasons why I do this is just to kinda of rule out that variable of the cards performance at least I can say that if it sucks it's not because it doesn't have good heating efficiency from the thermal paste. If it sucks, it just because it sucks. So let's finish.
All right, so our W4100, actually not too bad of a little graphics card. This thing was able to actually to play Fortnite at 1080p, low settings, and it was pretty stable at 60 frames per second average, and it was a good game experience. Even when you had like a bunch of people playing in there, just going back and forth in there, it held up admirably, and I was surprised. Actually, I did a video on the K2000 uh, Quadro, and this little Joker performs significantly better than that card which granted is a year newer so i'll give it that much but yeah actually overall not too bad uh we were able to play far cry 1080p low settings 31 frames per second which it's a decent playable gaming experience now i was able to get shadow of the tomb raider in horizon zero down horizon zero down would just it would not really load and when i did get it to load the game was just really not playable out there shadow tomb raider i lost the footage for that one but just to kind of give you guys an update on that just i was able to play that game 720p we were roughly able to stick it at 25 to 30 frames per second somewhat playable low settings pretty decent where i think this one shines more so is going to be in the uh budget home theater uh pc type setup that you're going to do probably in your living room also for those small computers and those potato computers that you're trying to have somebody play some fortnite that works actually really good and overall not too bad of a gra uh, graphics card one issue i will say with this is that there is some funky driver issues going on that you try to install the new stuff you get this whole open gl 2.0 error and kept trying to figure it out kept on trying to figure out eventually i got lucky and i don't know what i did i mean i just don't know what i did and it kind of works so if you're going to get this one just kind of keep that in mind and if you uh, have a solution or the best way that you guys find to get the newest drivers working for this one definitely let me know because i had to actually use the old ones and then i was able to get the new one but i kept on running some drivers issues with that so i don't know what that was about but the amd fire pro w4100 pretty admirable way better than the quadro 200 i think a lot of it because of the gddr5 aspect of it and it definitely a lot better than the k2000 in that sense but at least the k2000 was easier to install with the drivers on it so i like this graphics card it's pretty good one of those ones that we're just going to have to use right now until we're able to get better grip for graphics card but this is going to go in a low 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 end build and um, nothing too fancy about it just to kind of move that computer out of there considering i paid the low price of 20 us dollars for it so comment down below let me know what you think the w4100 do you guys like it where do you guys use it is it something that you guys consider and do you think it's a good graphics card if you like this video definitely hit the like button subscribe if you're not and as always we'll see what we come up with next